So David is uh, sorry. You have really few minutes, but just to to give uh, the the feeling of how this uh, ecology side of the of the model could work. So please, the the floor is yours. Okay. Hello everyone. Um, so we are going to continue today with the with the small model that we were making last time. Are you? Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, very well. Okay, so this was uploaded in the in the folder. So I think maybe some of you have already seen. This is a, a template of a, 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 of of a model that we will complete today. So as you can see uh, here, we have the same uh, the same modules of the last time the the CO two one forests, but the, this time we have added the. Uh, Two other modules say one for energy and one for materials. This is a very simplified version, not not like what you see today in the presentations, but it is to show more or less how this works. Um, so first of all, I will I will explain what there is in this template. Okay, so now here we have output is exogenous as before, but um, now it grows at an exponential rate. At uh, this uh, exponential rate, uh, we modeled in this way, introducing a variable that is called delay. I will show you more or less how it works. To put uh, a delay variable, you just select here this uh, delay fix in this in this uh, window here, and then you have to put the variable that will be delayed, the time step that the, it will be delayed. And the initial level. So this is uh, just to put uh, an exponential rate of growth and to make it depend on the level of each period. Okay, so now I explain uh, past uh, the different uh, the different modules. I will prepare. I prepared also a presentation to explain more or less how this works. Okay, so output growth at uh, two percent, and the energy basically the energy demand is proportional to output. Uh, here we put this parameter 0 0.02. It's this parameter here, energy intensity output. So from output, we have the energy demand. Then uh, we have renewable energy and fossil fossil energy. We assume that renewable energy is a, is a function of the capital stock in that sector. It is a standard production function with, um, with decreasing returns. That it means that the capital grows, but the production uh, it starts to grow uh, slower uh, at some point. And we assume that the capital stock grows at an exogenous rate. So this is the what we have here in this part. We have renewable energy depends on the capital stock. And here we have the capital, uh, the growth rate of the capital invested in renewable energy. In this template, this growth rate is zero. Okay, so it means that renewable energy is basically constant. The investment is not growing, there is just a, a, a given capacity of renewable energy that is constant. And then for fossil energy, we just assume that uh, this is a residuum. So what cannot be produced with renewable energy is produced with fossil energy. We put here this function. So this is the minimum in between this amount and a maximum amount of fossil, of fossil energy. And this amount is just the difference between the energy demand and the renewable energy. We put here the max between this and zero because it has it, it can happen that this goes to negative. So we put zero to, to truncate this. So the important part is that there is a maximum uh, amount of uh, fossil fuels that can be extracted each year. And we just assume that this is uh, uh, a, a proportion of the stock existing stock of fossil fuels, and the stock of fossil fuels uh, uh, will be eventually disappeared. So we have this in uh, this part here. Uh, fossil energy is uh, a function of renewable energy and energy demand, and the stock of fossil fuels here will be is uh, is slowly depleting. Now I'm going to explain the part of materials. 
uh, materials works very similar. There is a demand of materials that is proportional to output. It is this parameter here. So output uh, determines the demand of materials based on this parameter. And the uh, same as in energy, there are two sources of uh, materials, recycled materials and uh, new extraction materials. Here, um, also the, the recycling is also a function of the capital stock. So there is an investment that has to be made to increase recycling. We just modified a bit here the function because we are determining not the amount of, uh, of uh, recycling as such, but the recycling rate which is the rate between the recycled materials and the stock of waste materials. So this is a, this is a function that guarantees that this ratio is uh, always lower than one and that will never arrive to one. So not everything can be recycled, but it can approach varying these parameters. So this function is here. We have here again, the capital in recycling and this determines the recycling rate. Um, okay, and as the same uh, as, as with renewable energy, we're assuming that the rate of growth of capital stock uh, in recycling is also zero, here is zero, which means that the recycling rate is also constant. Here it's constant at 14%. Okay, uh, extractive materials works similar to fossils. So what cannot be produced, uh, the, the demand of materials that cannot be covered by uh, recycling is covered by extraction of new materials. And uh, there is a maximum amount of materials that can be extracted that is proportional to the stock of materials that will be eventually depleted, just as in uh, the, the energy part. What is interesting here is the cycle of materials. So materials extraction and disposal determine the, socio the socioeconomic stock. So here we have the stock of materials uh, on earth, this, this variable here materials. We have materials extraction. This extraction determines the socioeconomic stock that is all the structures in the economy. There is a rate of disposal that determines the waste. And uh, and the recycling rate is applied to waste to determine the amount of recycled materials. Okay, so this is this is basically the model, uh, the template that I that is uh, that is uploaded. Um, and we have two scenarios: a scenario with damage and a scenario with no damage. I think I have loaded both of them here. Yes. So we will see what happens to output. Um, with no damage, the output simply grows forever. And with damage, it, uh, it reduces because emissions start to constrain the rate of growth of, of output. What is interesting here to see is that uh, fossil energy, for example, arrives at a peak. And this peak is basically because it, it, it arrives at the uh, the limit of existing uh, of existing stock of fossil of fossil fuels. And in materials, we also have uh, a peak here because it touches the the existing stock of uh, of materials. Okay, so now what we're going to do is to add some uh, feedback because basically if you see output is not affected, it's not affected by these limits. So we're going to add those limits, but we are going to add also the feedback from renewable energy to materials demand. So renewable energy requires uh, some materials. So basically the feedback is that we introduce um another another demand of materials that is uh, that comes from real from renewable energy so i will put a parameter here that is materials density 
renewable energy. This is a constant that will be the variable, the, the units will be tons per joules. So the amount of uh, tons of materials per joules of uh, per unit of energy. And we put, we put 0 0.1. Okay. I will create another variable that is called the renewable energy materials required, which is the the requirement of uh, of materials that comes from renewable energy. So I put an arrow from renewable energy and an arrow from this new parameter. Okay, and this will be simply the product of these two new variables and the units are tons per year. So the tons of materials that are required for renewable energy per each year. Okay. And this will affect the demand of materials. So in materials demand, um, I will just uh, add the renewable energy materials required. Okay. And now we are going to add the limits. And to add the limits, the idea is to uh, introduce two types of potential outputs. So the output that uh, can be produced given the existing stock of materials and the existing stock of fossil fuels. So first I will add the potential output from energy here. So energy potential output. Um, and this is just the sum of the renewable energy and the maximum uh, extraction, uh, the maximum possible extraction of fossil, of fossil fuels. And here I have to convert this to output, to monetary units, because energy is in joules. So to convert to monetary units, I use the same parameter of energy intensity. Okay, so, so this will be renewable energy plus maximum fossil energy extraction divided by the energy intensity of output and the units of this are euro per year. Okay. And now I will create the potential output from materials. So materials, potential output. And here, the function will be exactly slightly different, but this will be just the, the result of the potential material supply, which is just the sum of the maximum materials extraction plus the recycled materials. And we have to um, we have to subtract from this the energy, the, the materials that are required for for renewable energy to arrive at what is available to, to produce out. And I also have to uh, use um, this parameter of materials intensity of output to convert to convert the supply, which is in tons of materials, to euros. Uh, okay. So this can be potential potential material supply, the total supply of materials minus renewable energy materials requirement. So I have what is, uh, what is left for, for output and this divided by the parameter of uh, intensity output. However, I will, I will do 
put something else here and is uh, put the maximum of this quantity and zero because it will be possible that this will go below zero. So I put the, the maximum between this and zero to truncate it at zero. And the units of this will be also euro and year. Okay, and now to impose the limits, I will add another variable that I will call simply potential output. And this is just the, the minimum of these two variables. This is also in euros per year. And now to constrain outputs, I will put a link from potential output to outputs. And output will be the minimum of the expression before and the new variable potential output. So this is basically because Vensim does not admit uh, more than three, more than three. Uh, variables in the function minimum. Okay, so now we can simulate with the new model, we can simulate uh, a scenario with damage and a scenario with no damage. I will first run a scenario with no damage. So I will change the sensitivity to climate damage output to zero and the sensitivity of forest also to zero. And I will run the simulation. And let's see what happens without damage. Nothing happens apparently. But now there is, I mean, output. Uh, wait, I will. Okay, now we have something different from the previous scenario the template and that here output output uh, declines at some point and we can see this comparing output with uh, the different uh, uh, levels of potential output so what we see here is that energy at some point uh, constrains the growth of output okay and this is basically because also the, the stock of fossil fuels are, are declining. Now I will run the scenario with damage. So I change the parameter here to one, the sensitivity to climate change, and also the sensitivity to of forest to damage to one. Okay. So let's first compare outputs. So now output grows uh, slower because the damage enters and damage uh, basically here reduces the rate of growth of output. So it starts to grow less. But interestingly, interestingly, at the end also, there seems to be a limit. So let's see what happens. I will, I will show only the scenario with damage to see how the limits are playing now. And we can select output, energy potential output and materials potential output. Um, and we see that now it's still uh, energy touches. So the output grows is lower, but there is, however, a little bit of energy that uh, constrains the growth of output in the end. Okay, um, so now an alternative to this can be uh, a strategy of green growth, say, so invest more on renewable energy. Here there is a, something that we have not changed, and is the fact that uh, the growth rates of renewable energy and of recycling was uh, were, were zero. So I would put a rate of growth equal to the rate of growth of output. And let's see what happens.
I will call this the much one. So let's compare the, the limits. So in the new scenario, we can see that the limits more or less are uh, are pulled away. No? So now the limits are not so con do not constrain that much um, the growth of output in energy. And uh, interestingly, now, uh, even if we have recycling, the limits of materials uh, are, are stronger than before. And this is uh, because uh, the increase in renewable energy increases the demand for materials. And this uh, in, uh, makes that the, the, the stock of materials depletes faster. So let's see what happens with output. Uh, I will show only this scenario damage one. So it's what, what we said at the beginning, the uh, limits from energy are kind of avoided, but the limits from materials enter at the end, but they do not enter in this uh, in this, uh, in this scenario. Let's see what happens to climate change. And let's see what happens to emissions. Emissions start to grow, but now they then reduce after because output grow less because of climate damage. And now let's say that we want to have a, um, a policy to increase uh, to increase uh, renewable energy, to make renewable energy grow faster. But uh, first, uh, I, I, I don't know, I want some feedback. Um, I will see if there are some questions. No, no David, you can go. OK. OK, so now the next, uh, we're going to analyze, say, a policy of uh, increasing the production of renewable energy. So I would just increase the growth rate of capital in renewable energy to 0 0.04. And because we'll call this, this is scenario damage grid. So we have damage, but we have a policy of uh, investment in renewable energy. Okay, and here we have this error. Uh, you see in temperature because this policy uh, was successful at reducing emissions. We see that emissions go to zero. Basically, and renewable energy at some point replaces fossils. We see here there's variable renewable energy share is the share of energy that comes from renewable sources, and it goes to one uh, at some point. Um, and we see that climate change was avoided in this new scenario. We don't have climate change. So let's see what happens to output. Um, so interestingly, we see that here there is a limit, no? With damage before, we had that output start to slow down because the damage entered. And now with green growth, we have uh, an acceleration of growth, but then there is a problem, and this comes from materials. So let's see what happens to the limits. I will show only the scenario with the, the green the green policies. So effectively, the limits from energy are avoided, but the limits from materials are stronger, and they are stronger because. Uh, higher growth of renewable energy increases the demand for materials, and this uh, accelerates the depletion of, of materials. We can compare these two scenarios again to see what happens with the, with the limits coming from materials. And yes, as, as I said before, with the, with the new policy, the limits are stronger. So this is interesting because it uh, it means that the uh, limits cannot be avoided so 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 easily. 
even if even with this with this kind of policy that would add uh, even uh, in a very simplified model <laughs> yeah okay and the last, the last thing uh, i i want to show is that uh, what happens in this scenario is that fossil energy at some point uh, uh, reduces emissions go to zero so here we don't have rebound effects so why don't we don't have rebound effects because rebound effects are when this investment in uh, in green energies or in, in, in the energy transition increases growth and growth at some point increases the demand from from fossils so i will add another feedback uh, very simple from the growth rate of the capital stock invested in renewable energy to the rate of growth of output. And I will say that the rate of growth of output will be the maximum between the constant rate of growth that we specified before, 2%, and the rate of growth of the capital stock in renewable energy. Oh, dear. Here we have, I have to put max. So this is a function max maximum. Okay. And let's call this damage green rebound. Let's see what happens. So here output grows faster obviously because now the rate of growth is not two percent but four percent and let's see what happens to the energy coming from fossil fuels we see that there's also an increase in the energy coming from fossil fuels because output grows faster let's see what happens to emissions emissions also increase because output, output grows faster and the climate change will be also stronger in this that's that's the scenario but there was a fall in output so let's see what happens to limits so we show only the last scenario and here again the limit come from materials um, Yes, because the increase in renewable energy increases uh, increases the demand from materials going from from renewable energy, but also the increase in output increases the demand from materials coming from output, and this uh, makes the limits coming from materials stronger. Okay, so that was the lab for today. So if you have any questions, uh, it's. Uh, it's good to know what do you but think. Thanks a lot, David, also for being uh, short. And uh, okay, so if you have uh, some clarification question, please. Uh, so of course, uh, I mean, we found a lot of feedbacks even without economy. No, so this idea of including uh, the, uh, so the the so I mean the the rebound effect uh, was just to, to sh let you know uh, let you see how then increasing the complexity of the model with the economy will uh, provide new new results but i have already the feedback seems uh, quite strong also this idea of limits of course we don't have prices here for a simplicity reason as uh, ole was explaining before of course prices would make a, a point in i mean in the scarcity issue but uh, however so we will discuss maybe this one after the economy module um okay sorry okay, I, was, see, uh, I, I see the one, one there is a question yes, david. from david and uh, so he asked what is the output delay so the output delay is basically the lag of the output um so here if you see the equation for output is uh, before i put the rebound effect it was the output delay multiplied by one plus the rate of growth less uh, the the effect of climate damage so this is just the uh, output delay is basically output in the previous period to have this function here it's very very simple oh, i think i think you are not what uh, you are not seeing right i stopped sharing no, my no, screen. exactly we, we cannot see the model but uh, but yeah but anyway I think delay is just, 
It's just the lag from output one period before. Um, okay, there is a question about uh, this is the way in which uh, we model within limits. Uh, it's not exactly, I was trying to explain that, of course, uh, as Ole was saying, there are uh, some price mechanisms that uh, reduce the issue, but I have the presence of limits uh, from resource and energy and the interaction between the two are something that is part of the story. Uh, it's also, I think, interesting to see how climate change make a sort of, uh, I mean, balancing effect on the use of resources. And of course, uh, we have to understand what happens in terms of uh, inequality and in society. That is something that we will try to add uh, next week. Okay, but of course, remember, we are simplifying tons of stuff. And this uh, this was the main idea of making this uh, toy toy model. But I think it's useful to understand how it's important to see the integrated approach. No? Because uh, even with very simplified uh, equation, it's clear that uh, uh, feedback loops uh, play an important role when you think about sustainability, even when you take one equation for each of the modules that you understood are very wide uh, in William, in the real William model. Um, okay. Okay, so okay, we, we made the uh, grow exponential instead of linear this time because maybe it's more, uh, I mean, uh, reliable with respect to what we have in the last two centuries. And uh, of course, you can try to see which is the difference if you come back to, I mean, to the to the linear model. Of course, the effect of less strong, uh, so strong, less, less strong than before, but probably we are going in the same direction. Yeah, so something else, also the delay, I bet the lack of the output is also to make uh, the, the part of the output depend on itself. Because if we leave uh, an equation, just like the initial level of output, times uh, a growth rate uh, at an, to the experiment of time, um, the output will be basically linked to the initial level and that's it. So when we put the lag, what happens uh, in the way, uh, in, the, in the trajectory of output will affect also the current level of output. That was uh, another reason to do it like that. Okay, so um, I, I sent, so probably we sent to you an email on this morning, but you see that all these files are organized in the drive. So if you want to see a bit these two models, how we, we manage to, to do this kind of uh, additional stuff, you can follow and we try to upload a bit uh, before for Friday. There was the week in the middle, it was not easy to, to communicate with you. And so I think uh, it's time to stop for today. So thanks uh, again to all the participants and uh, see you on Friday. Friday will be devoted to society and uh, economy. So remember our uh, ambition was also to try to have some, some results about inequality and social dimension, not only economy. So they will be the main topic of, uh, of Friday, the, the MOOC on Friday. Okay, so thanks again. Have a nice day.